Newspapers are one of your best resources for veteran research. Unfortunately, there's no magic archive where every newspaper ever is stored. They're scattered all over. We'll take a look at some of the best digital archives here, but remember that your local library or historical society might be the best place to look. Let's start with newspaperarchive.com. We've set up access for you, so talk to your teacher if you don't know how to get to this page. Newspaper Archive has one of the best online collections of West Virginia newspapers. The search function defaults to people's names, so let's try one of our veterans, Roland Sevilla. He was a football player, high school coach, state legislator, and more. So there's a good chance he'll show up. Sure enough, we've already got some results that bracket his life and career. Note the graphic here that shows the date range of your results. These match pretty well with the most active years of Sevilla's life, which increases the chances that these results will be relevant to our biography. Our top result is from Sevilla's school years on the East Bank High football team. We learn from this article that he's known as Big Joe and that he was an outstanding player in this game, even though his team lost. This could be a useful addition to Sevilla's biography, especially since future research will reveal that he went by Joe his whole life and played football in college, too. Newspaper Archive defaults to showing you results by relevancy, but you can sort them by some other categories, too. Just remember your own judgment is better at picking out relevancy than a search algorithm. Let's stick with this view, since we can see an article from much later in Sevilla's life, when he was a West Virginia state senator. Not only do we have an image here, but we learn that Sevilla got hair plugs in 1977 to alleviate his baldness. Now there's a fact for the history books. The image quality in these databases isn't always great, but now that we have a newspaper, date, and page number, we might be able to get a better scan from microfilm in the state archives. When you start writing your biography, you don't want to have to search for this page again, so we recommend saving it on your device. You could use the crop tool, but we recommend saving the whole page so you get the whole article plus all that useful info up top. Click on the Save icon to pull up some options. Personally, we think PDFs are best. Check this out. It'll default to saving your file with the newspaper, title, date, and page number. That's enough basics. Let's talk strategy. A couple things to remember about searching through databases like this. 1. The search engine isn't as smart as it looks. 2. Keep abbreviations or alternate spellings in mind. 3. Connecting different search terms will yield different results. Let's talk about the first one. Most of the time you use the search engine in a newspaper database, it's surveying the text page by page. Remember that relevancy thing we talked about? That's based on the search tool finding all the things you asked for on the same newspaper page, not necessarily the same article or sentence. The search engine doesn't actually know where each article begins or ends, so it can't tell the difference. So if we type in Colonel Roland Sevilla, because Joe eventually became a colonel, it may give us pages that have all those words, but they might be from two different articles and totally unrelated to what we're searching. The quickest way to tell is open the link and look for the yellow highlights displaying the words you searched. If you want the search to glue those two words together, you'll need to use the advanced search tool. We could type Colonel Sevilla here in the box with the exact phrase and get only results where those two words appear side by side exactly as we've typed them. But that leads us to the second point. If we know Roland Sevilla was a colonel, why does that exact search only net us one result, and from 1887, before he was born? This other article we found in a different search provides some useful clues. The word colonel is never actually spelled out completely. The article only uses the common abbreviation COL, so the search engine never picked it up because we asked for exact matches. What if we tried our advanced search with this new information? We get eight results instead of one. Remember that Colonel is a pretty high rank in the military, so Sevilla had to be promoted through various lower ranks first, like Lieutenant, Captain, and Major. So you'd want to run searches with those ranks paired with his name in various combinations. We did that and couldn't find anything yet, so it's possible Sevilla didn't start making the news until he'd reached a high enough rank. This is a pretty cut-and-dry case, but if we had a female veteran, we'd also need to search using her maiden name, and many older newspapers will publish articles that don't mention first names at all, so Roland might show up in places as R. Sevilla. Which all wraps up nicely with that third point. 
remember to try lots of different versions of your searches because they can bring in totally different articles. Let's look at that advanced search page again. What if we search for Roland Sevilla again and try to see if he was ever involved with the American Legion, a nationwide veterans organization? Once again, you can see that American Legion isn't actually in the same article as Roland Sevilla, but it still pulled an interesting result that might have been buried deeper with other searches. This article talks about a time Sevilla accompanied West Virginia Governor J. Rockefeller to Arlington National Cemetery to lay a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. That's pretty useful information. Those are important tips for newspaperarchive.com, and many of them will work for newspapers.com, which you can access through Ancestry. But it's important to remember that every single online newspaper database has different newspapers and search tools that work in different ways, so you should repeat your searches in a number of them. The Library of Congress maintains an amazing database called Chronicling America. If we search for Sevilla here, we get three Washington, D.C. newspapers from the 1930s about his college football days in Michigan. Two of these articles mention injuries he sustained while playing. Perhaps knowing about these injuries will help us understand his military career or other life choices he makes as we write our biography. Remember, we just did some basic searches in a couple of databases using just the veteran's name. If you search through multiple databases using other pieces of information like employers, family members, military ranks, or units, you never know what you might turn up. Check out the links below for some additional databases.